Hello crafty friends! My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. And in today's video, I have a special project for Scrappy Tails Crafts. I hope you'll stick around, see some new goodies I got, and find out how I'm going to make some adorable shaped cards. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Last month, Scrappy Tales Crafts reached out to me to see if I would like to do a little guest spot in April. I went and checked out their website and the products they sold and said count me in. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you everything they sent me to use this month and we're going to be making a fun set of butterfly shaped cards. Now make sure to keep watching as I go into the process because I'm going to tell you how you can save money on your next Scrappy Tales order. Before we get into the process, I did want to show you all of the goodies they sent me to work with this month. I actually just picked out the stamp and die set you see in front of you, which is called Heartfelt Wings. Not only does it have dies for all of these beautiful butterflies, but also for each of the sentiments. Now on a complete side note, as soon as I opened this up and took the stamp set out, I just fell in love with the packaging itself. I have never seen anything like this before, but like all of these sentiments and the butterfly images, they are all raised on that plastic. I've seen recently like those calming strips you can put on your laptop and I think, you know, you can like kind of pet them and you know, for to calm down, but I could totally see using this packaging as a calming strip. It is so neat. And again, never notice it on anything else, but if you place an order there, make sure to check that out. If you've been around my channel long, you know that I'm not too much of a fan of butterflies in real life, but I love to use them for crafting. So as soon as I saw this huge butterfly on this stamp set, and the fact that these are more realistic looking than the butterfly sets I have, I knew I had to have it. And today, that is actually the stamp that we're going to be using for our cards because it has this great matching or coordinating die to go with it. Now they did also surprise me with some other goodies, so let's go ahead and take a look at those. The next thing in my package was this gorgeous fancy rose oval die set. You have the fancy frame, and then if you want to cut out the center, you have the oval die to go with it. And then just this fun outlet of a rose. I can see myself using this for a great shaker window or just to make a clean and simple card. So pretty. Also in the package was this butterfly. Again, love butterflies. And I like how this one, it has the body as a separate die. I know you can always use this to cut a second copy, but this will save on some cardstock and then I won't have to go in with my scissors and fussy cut out just the body. Now you might notice mine do have magnets on the back and that was something I did here. Just a heads up, those wouldn't come with your order. Now finally, you know I love shaker goodies and sequins and mixes, and in this gorgeous bag which is purple with these silver butterflies, they sent me two shaker mixes. This first one has some pink and white flowers and then white, black, and pink butterflies. And the next one is just this gorgeous light purple mix of pearls and little stars so pretty and shiny now any products that i can find that they sent me i will link in that description box below but they have so many other themes and products i know you're going to want to take some time and look around editing alicia here to give you a little update on some of the goodies i got sent the two shaker mixes i couldn't find anything exactly the same on the website but i have linked their embellishments page and they have lots of fun shaker mixes and the die on the right i checked and it's not on their site because it was actually a die you got free with a 125 dollars purchase just wanted to give you that little update 
And don't forget, while I'm doing the process, I'm gonna tell you how you can save 15% on your order. As I get into today's process, I will tell you about other products and tools that I bring in to use. But as always, if I ever leave you with any questions, feel free to leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Off camera, I cut some scraps of white cardstock to five and a half inches wide by five inches tall. These are going to be the pieces I ink blend on and there is plenty of room for that die cut butterfly. Speaking of ink blending, that's what I'll be doing first. I did get out a little kind of tacky mat to hold my cardstock down and catch the excess ink. And for the first two pieces, I will be using a yellow and an orange. For the ink blending, I want one color to be kind of the center of the butterfly and the second one will come in from the edges on the wings. I get started with the yellow ink and I ink blend in the center of the piece. I go kind of um, top to bottom and then bottom to top until I have some coverage I like. Now once that yellow is done, I'll bring the orange in from the side and you'll see me here in just a minute bring that butterfly dye in just to kind of get an idea if I'm getting the color where I want it. And I do go back and forth with the colors until the piece is all covered. While I work on that, I wanted to tell you about the special discount code. When Scrappy Tales asked me to be a guest artist for the month, I asked them if they might give me a special discount for you. And they have, and I am so pleased to tell you, they are extending 15% off for my subscribers until the end of April. Now I do have some more details in that description box below, but basically there's no minimums and nothing is excluded, but you can't use it on previous orders and you cannot combine it. The code that you'll want to use at checkout is up on screen now. And again, I will have that in the description box as well. Here's a look at that first ink blended piece all finished. You might notice there are some darker areas and it's kind of splotchy, but Gina K inks kind of settle over time. And because we're gonna be stamping on it later, it's no big deal. I finished ink blending the rest of these off screen and here's a look at the final six ink blended pieces. Now I will list all of the individual colors I used in the description box below. Now it's time to bring in that big, beautiful butterfly and get it stamped onto each of those ink blended pieces. I will be stamping with VersaFine Claire Black ink and heat embossing with Detail Clear embossing powder. Now I'm just gonna set this up once in my Misty so I can stamp it the six times. And I try to center the butterfly as best as possible on the area. And then before I go ahead and ink it up, I prepped that piece of cardstock with my powder tool. And then I inked up and stamped the butterfly twice to make sure the black was nice and solid and nice and juicy. I went ahead and poured on the powder over this piece once it was stamped and I set that to the side and I did the same with the second piece of the orange and yellow ink blended cardstock. Once both pieces had been stamped and powdered, I brought in my heat tool and I set that. I love how nice and bold and black it looks and the shine of the stamping with that clear embossing powder. I finished the remaining four pieces using the same process, and here's a look at those six all done. Next, I brought in that coordinating die to cut out the butterflies. I did decide to make kind of a jig or template for my die cutting, and I did this by cutting a copy out of white cardstock, and so I would have some place to adhere the tape to. I cut out little indents on the top and bottom, and then what I did, I aligned or I lined up this white copy around the outside of the stamped butterfly and got it so there was even borders as possible and taped that to the background with some scotch removable tape. This way I can just bring in my die and have it set down in that opening and then I know that this is going to get me nice even borders almost every time. Here's a look at all six butterflies die cut. I just think these are so beautiful. 
Now we need to work on turning these into cards. I grabbed six card bases from my stash and you will notice that these butterflies are larger than the average A2. So what I'm going to be using are some invitation envelopes that I always keep on hand. They are A6 and it is going to fit that butterfly. These don't cost extra to mail and I just get mine at Walmart so these envelopes are easy to find. To make that custom shaped card, we're going to be using the coordinating butterfly die. And for my cardstock bases, I did go with the thinner white that I always keep on hand because when I tried the thicker, the 100 pound cardstock earlier, it wouldn't completely cut through the card base no matter how many times I rolled it through. So since we're going to have the card bases 80 pound and another piece of 80 pound on top of it, I think this lighter weight card base will be just fine for this. To hold my die in place while we do the die cutting, I will be using the same two pieces of Scotch removable tape. And I'm going to align the very bottom of the butterfly die with the bottom edge of my card base. Once those are in place, I put a piece of removable tape on either side, and then I'm going to show you how I die cut these. So I brought in my cuddle bug. It's the first time I've used it in a while, and I do miss it. And what I did was I rolled my card forward and then backward and I did make sure to hold it down when it went through to the other side just so it didn't pop up and out of place. Now you'll want to kind of see before you remove the edges if it looks like the die cut through the back and mine did so I started to remove it. You'll want to make sure around the antenna that you're extra careful because you don't want to tear those. And then you'll see here how the butterfly sits on top of that. And you can't even tell that the card base in the back, it doesn't have the complete wings. I cut the rest of the card bases using this same process. And when all six were done, it was time to get the butterflies adhered to the front. To do this, I'm going to be using my art glitter glue in the fine tip bottle and I kind of go around the outside of the back of the butterfly making sure to get the wings covered throughout and I'm really careful to get the antennas nice and covered so they'll adhere later. Once the glue is on the back, I place these onto a card base and I align the bottom of the butterfly first and then kind of wiggled it until everything at the top was aligned. Again, just paying a little bit of extra special attention to the antenna. And here is a look at how that opens. I just think this is so fun. I continued adding the rest and I gave them some time to dry. Let me know in the comment section below if you've ever made shaped cards similar to this. I wanted to stamp a sentiment on the inside of each butterfly, so I got out my VersaFine Onyx Black ink and the butterfly stamp set. Now this set has tons of great sentiments, but so I can send these out for more occasions, I decided to go with the word hello, and I tried to get that centered on the inside of the card right on the body of the butterfly. Once that was set up, I inked it up with the ink and stamped it and it was beautiful the first try. So now, since I was stamping with my Misty, I could continue to stamp the rest of the cards just like this. While I had the Misty out, I decided that I would bring back in all of the inks that I did the ink blending with and decorate my envelopes. To do this, I want the butterfly to kind of stick off the left edge, so I ended up aligning my envelope with the five and a half inch mark on the right ruler, and then I got a nice angle on the butterfly. Once that was in place, I inked it up and stamped it, and I tried to start and go from the lightest inks to the darkest. I just thought this would be a fun addition, either if I use these cards or if I give them away as a set. I did make sure between each color to clean off the stamp and the mouse pad of my Misty so I didn't contaminate any of my ink pads or get ink onto the back of my envelopes. I continued the process until all six envelopes were done and here are some close-up looks at the finished set.
I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together this fun set of butterfly shaped note cards using some goodies from Scrappy Tales Crafts. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Don't forget to check out the shopping links and that coupon code in the description box below. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.